the more I am in contact with those who need help here and abroad, I see the breakthrough with the very desperate. I don't know anything more except desperation equals overcoming and breakthrough. And I think sometimes God will allow us to go through desperate times because that's what causes us to become desperate. So I don't want anybody to be discouraged. But you see this kind of pampery way we have with toe hurting. We have to stop. We have to do things. Saints, here's the thing. We, we know there's self-care, but there's also self-worship. There's also a, 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 a magnified way of us thinking that we need more than we really do. Because by the time we finish feeding ourselves, whatever it might be, we don't have time to be desperate for God. And what you put in is what comes out. It's not that you do the work. The Holy Spirit, it's a move of the Holy Spirit, but he sees the hearts. And sometimes, because of what we've been in contact with, in our generational line, in areas that we have gotten involved in stuff, where we have been members of religions like Roman Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, I can name many more. Because we don't see those as pagan religions, we think actually the road is a lot easier than if you were in Freemasonry and Rosicrucianism and those things. But it's the same. Just want to let you all know. But your desperation, God sees. So... As much as you may become concerned about, you know, things that people get concerned about, making sure we see enough of our friends, whatever, I am saying to you, your desperation to walk in victory is really what makes a difference. I, I want us to know that because we are around each other and because... For some time now, the Holy Spirit did not lead me to spell out certain things because the church wasn't ready. Many of us believed that once we came and attended church, we're fine. You even have those preaching that demons can't really affect Christians. They know nothing about the wounded soul that actually once it stays wounded, you are set back. But God says through his word, Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. So the way has been made for us to have our broken souls healed. But I'm saying we've become very natural. We've forgotten that our father is a spirit and we are in a spiritual war. So a lot of the exposure to Roman Catholicism, Hinduism, um, all those religions where pagan gods are worshipped requires us to understand that what we were involved in has to be purged out with hyssop. The deep and hidden things have to be purged out. Religion is not going to purge it out. What your understanding of church, the church next door, is not going to purge it out. And so, the desperation, why am I aware of the desperation? Is because, and I call it a privilege, y'all. I, I, I really, really, don't get me wrong. I, I don't have a problem when I meet with people who are not desperate or I meet with people with situations that may not be critical because Christ died for all. But I will tell you this. When I get emails and messages from those who it's life or death because of Satanism that they got into and they can't get out because I know that 
Satan breeds what you call super soldiers. They are bred to kill. They are used as agents on this earth to destroy. And when people get into Satanism, that song, Hotel California, is actually a devilish song. Because that's what it means. You go in, but there's no way out. I want you to understand my heart is so encouraged. So I'm just going to bring you up to date a little bit without saying too much details because um, even those people listen to the videos so they actually hear what we say here. I'm so encouraged to know that because of the need that my sister in Christ had to sabotage with her handlers, that meant losing her livelihood. You all would remember I spoke about someone who had gotten into Satanism. And then the Lord said, back off, because I had to make sure that... You see, because I, I get a lot of, I'm serious, pastor. And next week, we're still gossiping. We're not serious. So I, I reach a point now where it's like, okay, we'll see by the fruit how serious you are. I want to say how, how my heart was warmed because... When people make a decision to cut off from their handlers, I want you to understand that it was like not taking the mark of the beast and starving. Because a lot of times, handlers, for those who were in Satanism, literally are the ones assigned to keep them in Satanism, and you can't come out like that. And I want to tell you that when I, when I, then I hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit, reconnect and find out, and I hear that that step was taken, even if they didn't know what the next step was, because guess what? I had disconnected. I didn't say I was going to help down the road. I said, this is what you need to do. And I'm out of there because I know I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not an enabler. I'm not a savior. I just, if you're serious, then perhaps the Holy Spirit will say, okay, get involved. And that's the attitude I'm using, actually, for our local community as well as the global community. If you're serious, you'll get help. You're not serious, don't waste my time. Go and talk to your friend. Because there are too many people who are, it's not the day in Satanism, you know, it's that Jesus Christ is raising up an army and coming for a church without spot and wrinkle and he has made a way for it to happen and there are many that want it. So don't block the way. You'll hear more about the things that block us I said this earlier, I'll talk to you a minute about that, or maybe the next session that we're having, because I, I, there's a, I'm, I'm, I'm going along a, a thread right now. And I want to say to you that the kind of suffering we're talking about is that when people are coming out of that level of Satanism, they can't even have their families be in contact with them because they are not totally out. And those demons know because the person is not going to get delivered of everything straight away. Nor is it only demons. Because as you will, you will find out, I've been teaching you, if you leave the soul out, then there are parts that will not get healed. And the demons will come back. So it's not just about the demons. And so when I, when, when I hear this, it doesn't even mean the family can come together and deal with this. Because sometimes the enemy will attack the family who is trying to help the other family member. Do you understand? So sometimes there has to be boundaries put in. Now I'm talking here, and I want you to understand. Because of a serious scenario, people know if you don't put in those boundaries, you and your family might find yourself killed off. Because Satanism, they are like, it's do or die. We are so accustomed to, to, to bubblish us, you understand? If I tell somebody, move away from people because of the situation you are in that you need to focus on Jesus, but take it to the Holy Spirit. You're all going to hear me say that line all the time because if I don't say it, the word is she controlling. So I'm not controlling nobody. i suggesting and i telling you pray and whatever you want to do, you do. I see the desperate ones, both abroad and here. They don't care what their friends say. They separate in the self because the situation for them is so serious. 
I want you to know we don't have to reach the point of serious thing in our marriage to take the serious steps now. We don't have to reach the point of serious things in our walk with the Lord to say we can't take that step now. There are some that have spent far too many years in bondage. Many years have been wasted when you could have been walking in your destiny, but it's not too late. Why? Probably because someone was not there to disciple you, but also too, we never seem to understand. We are in this world, but not of this world. All your little groupy friends that you want to have, that's okay, but that might not be what you're supposed to be clinging to. If you want God to take you to the depths that he wants to take you. Does it mean that you can't have friends? For some of you it might. Depending on what you're dealing with, you might have to just be in a wilderness for a season. And for some of you it doesn't matter because you have healthy boundaries. And for some, you've just always had healthy boundaries. So you don't have to worry about whether or not to have friendships. But I'm here to tell you that my heart, can't go into any more detail, is most blessed because I understand. Okay, okay, those handlers were cut off. So here's what. Perhaps we can now start to deal with some things. But I have to tell you, they don't have a lot of help out there for these kinds of situations. And you know what I love to hear? I didn't know if you would message me back. I asked Jesus, will you please ask her to message back? But even if you didn't message back, I, I said to Jesus, somehow Jesus, you will help me because I don't know what to do, but somehow you will help me. You see that desperation? That means the focus is Jesus. I'm secondary. Do you understand? And that goes for anybody else because I'm not the only one to walk alongside a person. It's like... I'm not even going to give up. I don't know if I'm going to get help, but I'm just desperate. Since if we had that attitude with what we consider probably respectful bondage, that's the only word I could call it, respectful bondage, because we are living our lives, we are doing what we call to do, but we don't even know what we really call to do that we're not able to do because we've grown accustomed to a level of bondage that has left us numb to the kind of authority and power that the early church walked in. But no more, because the tables have turned. And for the remnant that want the tables to turn in their life, it will be a remnant. If you're looking for a crowd earlier, it's not going to be a crowd. I've said it now, I've said it before. There were some that will not stay here as God takes us forward. It will be too uncomfortable for them. It has nothing to do with me. But remember, it's a remnant that stayed with Jesus at the end. It's a remnant few will find that narrow road. So at the end of the day, I want you to know that my heart warms because it's so easy. With the kind of journey that some people are going to have to go through to come out of a level of bondage that they didn't think they would get into, because of what they got into. A lot of times, we don't understand what we've gotten into and the ramifications of it. There are those who just want Jesus so much that they're not going to give up. And I'll tell you something. The child of God that desperately wants Jesus, even if they don't get the help and they're not walking in victory, God knows that heart that wants him. They might not end up walking in their destiny, but they want Jesus so much that they will go to heaven because it's to do with a heart. But you don't want to stay on this earth and be tormented for the rest of your life. And he has made a way. He has made a way. And so I just want to say to those listening, Jesus is pleased with your desperation. Stay desperate. Don't get caught up with the rest of the church, churchy people who come to church, to go home from church. Stay connected to Jesus. Because a lot of times, churchianity doesn't know half of what is going on in the spiritual realm. They've become so much focused on the natural. 
I said to somebody today, in the early times in this church, demons might scream out. We're talking about tarrying. Lots of things would happen. And it's not that we don't take authority over the enemy, but we didn't really, people didn't care who knew that they needed help. But as we got more dignified, we got more closed, and less breakthrough occurred. My point is, I said to somebody, you need to stop thinking about supposing something happens. By the way, there's nobody in here that I was talking to. Supposing something happens and you get embarrassed. I said, and what? I said, God forbid till the end of the time that God allows us to lead, that we have to lead a dignified church. I, I, it's not for me. There's nothing wrong with being a dignified person, but when pride comes in the way of the move of the Holy Spirit, because we cannot bear anybody to know that we are struggling, we cannot bear if by accident, maybe there's something there that screams out, or we weep and weep and weep, or we run to the altar, you done already put up a barrier to Jesus Christ. So I want you to know something that you may not be aware of. And I'm just going to say this very briefly and call it an introduction to the Queen of Heaven. All of this before was part of the introduction. A lot of us hear about Jezebel, hear about this, hear about that. But we don't know much about the, the Queen of Heaven but you have to know, because Jezebel usually works in conjunction with the Queen of Heaven. And many of us, you know why you know the Queen of Heaven. In the Catholic Church, they call Mary the Queen of Heaven. But it's in the Bible, and it's a pagan god. And yes, the, the, who they're worshipping is a pagan god, but they don't know. They don't know the term because they don't read the Bible. So they will say the Queen of Heaven is making the wrongs of the churches, or they will refer to I'm letting you know, there's only one queen of heaven and she is the most wicked and daring principality that Satan trusts very much. You see, those who are in high level Satanism, these are the kinds of, um, I don't kind call it a stronghold, the kind of pagan gods that come up in their portfolio. It's for, it's for one to, they have some names I can't pronounce. But I'm not talking about all of them today. I'm talking about this one because this one works with the, with the Jezebel. And this one is very common because if you think about how many Catholic churches, and I'm, if you want to write me to tell me I'm coming against the Catholics, I'm not. I'm coming against the pagan gods that many of them worship, that they don't know are pagan gods. And because more and more are coming to this church now, they have to be also informed that there's some renouncing we have to do because that was part of what they were told was okay. See, if you think because you've left a church that worships pagan gods and you come to a church that tells you it's a pagan god, then you've got to make time to get some renouncing against what you were part of. And I will tell you that you can inherit paganism without knowing it because you were born into it. But then God opens your eyes. The Queen of Heaven is the most wicked and daring principality that Satan trusts very much. She's connected with virtually all evil. She is to Satan what the Holy Spirit is to God. And her witchcraft is the most sophisticated in the list. She is the eternal partner of Satan. She is the direct executive of Satan. No department of Satan's kingdom can act without her knowledge. This is a global principality that people think is some little piece of, you know, well, okay, it's a little statue called the Queen of Heaven. The people that worship that statue don't understand what they've gotten involved in, but I have to tell you this. If you were privy, if something happened to you with the Queen of Heaven, you surrendered your life to God, it's okay. Woman of faith, Man of faith, I want you to understand. Don't even worry about how you'll be set free. You will be. You understand? It's a lack of knowledge that causes us to don't get involved with getting the renouncing the things, okay? Not knowing. 
That's the problem. Don't worry about, oh gosh, what will happen? It's okay. Your next disciple in appointment, bring it up. It probably came out in your, your questionnaire that you filled out. And we, we're getting there. Okay? So there's nothing to worry about. What you need to bother about is if you are not bothered about it. And did not realize how serious it was. Where you were doing a million novenas and bowing down and whatever and whatever. But she has different names. So it's not just in Catholicism. I'm just calling a name because I know you all are familiar with the title. Through Catholicism. And if there's anybody listening today, you're offended because I'm talking about the worship of a pagan god within Catholicism, please take it to Jesus and go to the scripture that I'm about to call out. Okay? I'm not going to deny truth. So, she's in possession of every sinner's file. Satan himself, in most cases, he tends to use this principality quite a bit. And this is probably where very inadvertently they go to her as the way to God. Because they literally consider her the way to God. She's the inspirer of all false doctrines. She's the overseer of dead churches and all evil groups, anti-God and anti-Christ organizations. And she also interferes with the character of men. She is the character builder of all evil men. Her chief ministry is to misinterpret, oppose, and fight God and his people. So, at the end of the day, the word says, Therefore, pray not thou, this is Jeremiah 7, 16 to 18, Pray not thou for this people, neither lift up, cry, nor prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. It's in the Bible. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. You could take whatever translation that you want and you will find that name in there in more than one occasion. That's why if you read the Bible and then you hear somebody saying, Queen of Heaven, we're, we're, we're doing a novena to the Queen. You should, ding, ding, what? So this is one of the few places in the scripture where God forbids prayers. And for those who disobeyed God and went ahead and prayed, God said he would not hear their prayers. So maybe you went ahead and prayed, or maybe you have not dealt with the fact that you prayed to this pagan God, this principality. God hears you, but you are still hindered and you don't know why. Or you don't even know why you're not going deeper. Because we perish for lack of knowledge. But God is exposing these things to those churches that want to know God. Hear the question. I said it on Sunday. You planted that church in the book of Acts. as the church that Jesus planted. That's the only model we want. So bring us back to the church that Jesus planted. And as we go forward, then he will move. As he moved in the book of Acts. And he will give us word of knowledge and wisdom. And he will give us awareness of the schemes of Satan. If it is not taught in other churches, it is because parts of the Bible are being left out. Just like I told you, he heals the brokenhearted. You need to understand this is huge. I can't go into it because I'll be teaching it on more than one occasion. I've started already. If your soul is not healed and your soul is fragmented and your soul can be fragmented, you could cast out all the demons you want. They will all come back, most of them. But what will happen is you will still be kept back because you can't worship God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind because your soul is still in some pieces. 
As a matter of fact, when you worship, like now, you might be worshiping and there are parts of your soul that are not worshiping. So you can't go and say you're worshiping in spirit and in truth in the deep and hidden parts. Because some of the hidden parts are still hidden. But God says he's made a way. Do you understand? God has made a way. So I want you to know that God said he wouldn't hear their prayers. Jeremiah was popularly known as a weeping prophet. His tears always attracted divine intervention. He was disliked. So if you're, if, if, if you're called to the office of prophet, or maybe you know by testing and the church tests that you are operating in prophecy, doesn't mean you operate in the, gift of, in the office of prophet, but God gives you words. You should know that the character trait of a prophet is that they are not liked. They are despised. They are considered to be, please, say nothing. They are direct like Nathan, blunt. So if you are going to somebody who is always tickling your ears with a word from God, perhaps they are diviner. Because it is not that God does not give you a word of encouragement but you are not going to find those who operate with that particular either office or gift. Being the, they, they love people, but they say it as it is. And if you vex, you vex. Once they know that gift have, has been tested, and we are still in the process of testing things for those humble people that still message things that are coming to them, the church is able to test it. There are those who are rolling stones, their own independent selves. I wouldn't be able to tell you if that's an authentic gift or if, and it wouldn't be me alone. It's just that sometimes we have a mix of divination and it's called prophetic divination. Okay? That's why you're part of a church community. Iron will sharpen iron. So I want us to know that whenever an individual or groups of individuals give their loyalty or cooperation to the Queen of Heaven, whether directly or indirectly, they become enemies of God. Thank God for Jesus, because many of our ancestors made us by dedicating us to the Queen of Heaven. But God has made a way for us now. So your now matters. But as you will find out, if I get to Please, can we expose these things and find out how to reject and renounce these things? Let's do it. The ones, let me tell you, the ones who can miss nothing because it will affect them. You see the ones that are coming out of Satanism? They can't leave. You see, like, we could get away with it because we are like, well, we, are, it has, we had bondage we didn't know about and we, and we, and we okay. We functioning okay. We hallelujah and we pray and so we okay. When you come out of Satanism, you can't function just like that. These people that I have to journey with or other people journey with, you're making a commitment sometimes for years. You're making a commitment to being, to being involved with something that's pretty dangerous if you deciding you're doing your own thing because the enemy will destroy whoever is trying to cause those who want to escape or have escaped to be free. So there are those of us who work with those outside as part of a community. I don't do things by myself. Do you understand? This community and the other communities. So unless the people turn to God in repentance, and that's the key, I no longer want this. Oh, this is in my ancestral line. Jesus, help me to know how to repent of this one. If we do not repent, God will abandon us totally and destruction without remedy will become our lot. God therefore commands that until they repent, and that was the passage we read, no prayer should be offered. Crying would not help the situation and intercession will fail. Some of us like to jump into intercession for people and I am not here to tell you, don't pray for people. But there seems to be a codependency in Christianity that every prayer you get, request, you run with. You don't stop and ask the Holy Spirit how to pray. And sometimes 
You may be praying. Now you could say, I'm going to pray to my God because I know this person is in plenty bondage. Lord, touch them. A lot of times we don't understand some of the stuff that they are struggling with. You've got to make sure the Holy Spirit points you to pray, teaches you how to pray for them. Because you might be praying for somebody who's worshiping the Queen of Heaven and doesn't want to stop, but knows that you pray. So hear what? So, so, so pray for me now. And they go back and say the rosary and go back and do what they have to do. Doesn't mean you don't pray for people even if they're not saved. But like everything else, Holy Spirit, who should I pray for? God will burden some people and there will be others will tell you I did not, I didn't get that burden to pray for that person. Sometimes I just pray God have your way. I can't pray for everybody that needs prayer. But I know that God hears. And it's a good thing to be an intercessor. So I want you to know, and I'm, I'm saying this briefly because I'm not, we're not even going into the deeper realms of unmasking the queen of heaven. And so we're going to do it in parts. I'm doing this because I'm coming back to Jezebel who operates and is connected to the queen of heaven. But we always hear in Jezebel, we do hear the queen of heaven. I want you to know, the word says, Jeremiah 7, 17 to 18. See us again. See us thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. The children gather wood, the fathers kindle a fire. The women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Another time I'll give you the names of the queen of heaven in the different religions. Because they, she exists in the different religions. God opened Jeremiah's eyes to see what people were doing in the cities. The sin of idolatry was committed right in the streets of Jerusalem by all members of every family. Cakes were made of honey, fine flour, and other ingredients, merely shaped like the moon to, 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 to the replica of what the cakes were offered. They also practiced prostitution in connection with this worship. During the sacrifices, all the women converts were to submit to immorality in identification with their God in this worship. This must be done at least once. This entry point demands immorality as a seal of covenant with the queen of heaven. Prophet Jeremiah confronted them concerning this and wanted them to go into repentance, but they were determined to do their sin. Does it not surprise you that if you have people who they talk about these gods because they believe that that's the way to Jesus. Or they, they talk about these gods. And I remember I said there are other um, pagan religions, Hinduism, um, Mormonism, um, Rosicrucianism. But I want you to understand something. You ever wondered why it is sexual immorality doesn't seem to be a problem? The carnival is like David before the Ark of the Covenant. That's what carnival is. The priest that does um, jumps up to Ahsoka right in the middle of the church. The band that's allow, allowed to come in with naked women in the church. Because when you're worshiping foreign gods, sexual immorality goes hand in hand and you tell yourself it's okay. And for some reason... People are not putting two and two together. Even if I did not tell you anything about the queen of heaven, you're supposed to know anything that agrees with sexual immorality, something is wrong with who that person is worshiping. And you could pray all you want, but if you're in sexual immorality in a different way, you are not praying to the Jesus of the Bible. You're praying to another Jesus. I'm not going there today, but I'm going to tell you that's why some Christians could convince themselves, I okay. I know I shouldn't do this, you know, but because it's another Jesus. There's the Jesus of the Bible and there are other Jesuses that have been created by religion. Because once you are praying to the true and living God, there's no way you could stay in sexual immorality. So in this case, the word says here in Jeremiah 8, 49, Moreover, 
Thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast the seat, they refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. Not, no man repented of him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rushes into battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knows her appointed times. The turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord. There are so many times, even now, those who have eyes to see and ears to hear will know the signs of the times. Where all you want to do is beg God for mercy because judgment is coming. I wouldn't know when, but I'm certainly on high alert. I'm not walking depressed, but I know according to the word and the discernment of what is in the atmosphere, you know is only Jesus have mercy. That kind of season. But here God is saying, imagine the stork in heaven knows her appointed times. And the turtle and the crane. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. God's people, because he refers to these people as his people, there are those that do not know. They say they don't know, but some really don't know. It's like they are calling good evil and evil good. So whoever you decide to follow, I think the time has come. I've said this to people. Get your Bible out. It's not your friend to advise you. No matter how long your friend in church. No matter how long you think your friend is spiritual. Because when that falling away takes place, listen to me. You will think it's some big thing that, yeah, 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 we know that's not true. You will be so accustomed to being lulled in a direction, seduced as the word, that it will be just easy to be to fall away. It is not going to come in an obvious way. But if you are in the word, and the word means more to you than, than your friend's advice, you will know. And he says here, How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. I want you to understand that the role of the queen of heaven is literally to invade God's people, God's kingdom invade as in the churches we'll start with the churches and we end up rejecting God's word in favor of other things but it's not lining up with the word but we're accepting it that is rampant please don't say it's only in the pagan religions it's in full gospel churches not all it's that's why I will say it very openly. My community that I am accountable to, not in this country. I am not anybody big. But I will tell you, I don't bow to let's be part of a group. And you see in teachings that not even exposing sin we talk about this country and the fact that many of the top are in the corruption so when those who are brought in want to expose the corruption they get moved away it's in the church so god has not led me it does not mean anything is wrong with those who are here i prefer to be accountable outside of here because i don't trust the watered down messages that is not in all the churches. There are some that have stood the ground and are really working hard. But there are those that are too much water down, too much compromise. And those who want to go there want to come and criticize what goes on in churches where all we want 
is for Jesus Christ to change us from the inside. May we decrease and he increase whatever it takes. I'm not making excuses for that. Don't care if you call me radical. Don't care what you say because it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters because what happened, even with Ananias and Sapphira, they thought they could start a lie. And God made a point. He killed them dead right there. And fear of God fell upon the church and they understood holiness. And we are going back to those times. I've said it before. Nobody wants to hear it. Some hear it. Some, we are, you know why? God's mercy must come upon the church of Jesus Christ. Because we call good evil and evil good. I want you to know that's the work of the Queen of Heaven. And I want you to, to know as I close with this part. The argument here is that when men fall, they get up again. And when they lose their ways, they turn and seek their way back home. But a covenant with the Queen of Heaven makes people hold fast to deception. Nothing you tell them. They could see it in the Bible now and they will tell you, well, that's not what we worship. Your body is naked. It's okay. It's like David was naked before the, the Ark of the Saints, how? In the midst of their destruction, Jeremiah confessed the sins of Israel and pleaded that God should save them for the sake of his name. And that's got to be our posture, y'all. Even when you recognize, if you are a remnant, that's okay. You continue, you can't repent for people. You could confess their sins. You can confess the sins of a nation. You can't repent. You can't make a nation turn around. But you never ever say, good, let it come. No, because when judgment comes, is all of us are going to be affected. As I close, he says here, O oh Lord, and this is Jeremiah 14, 7 to 9, through our iniquities testify against us, do thou it, for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee, O oh, the hope of Israel, the savior thereof in time of trouble, why should thou be as a stranger in the land and as a wayfaring man that turns aside to tarry for a night? Why should thou be as a man, as Tony, as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O oh Lord, are in the midst of us and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. This is our cry today. But guess what? God turned down the request. So for those of you that feel that, that the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, all you do is beg him, and of course he will hear. There are times when he will not hear our prayers. Because we are worshiping pagan gods, and we want to also flirt. We have to call it flirt with Jesus Christ. And the sad thing is there are those who think they are okay because nobody told them. Or they are raised in churches where it's okay. So he says here, verses 10 to 12. Thus says the Lord unto his people, thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet, therefore the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember iniquity and visit their sins. Then said the Lord unto me, pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them. I will consume them by the sword and by the famine, by the pestilence. Of course, he's a God of love, but he is also a God of justice. And he is still the same way today. I wish some Christians would grow up and stop this foolishness. It was okay, you know. It's all right. He knows your heart. Let a person die in the sin, get hit by a car, and hear what God will tell you. Did I not tell you to warn that wicked man? His blood is on your hands. The fact is, what I'm saying is hope. Because this is the reason why because of what has gone on, even with how we were raised, what we were raised in, what we thought was okay, even when we were going to respectable churches, we are now finding out it really wasn't. And perhaps that's why we are so religious and legalistic, 
that the Spirit of God, and somebody tell me and from the bottom of their heart, I told them, I said, thank you, Jesus, for giving you that revelation. And this person said, I don't really feel like I could go deeper. I said, what are the gifts that God has given you? I never thought about it. That's called honesty. You know what a religious person would have said to me? Well, I prayed last night, but for some reason the Lord didn't tell me, you know. That's some of the rubbish I get sometimes when people don't want to be honest. This person said, you know, I don't know. I said, ah, so now we're ready because you're supposed to know the gifts he's poured out. You're supposed to, God wants to take you deeper. God wants to take you higher for his name's sake. Don't settle for what they say is okay. Respectable Christianity, don't settle for it. And he got it. He got it. And I want you to know the only solution, because God says, no, tell them not to pray. There are things in our life today. And this is what the Queen of Heaven, I'm not going on further to talk about that entity, but I will be coming back to that entity because that is a, a principality that is a global principality and it's in many churches in many different ways, not only in the Roman Catholic churches. But I want you to know that the only solution is total repentance and turning away from the Queen of Heaven. So the kingdom of the Queen of Heaven is a reality. It is a well-organized department in the satanic kingdom. It is a well-structured system assigned to exercise dominion over human life. I want you to know. And from in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 14, 12 to 21, God spoke about turning away from the queen of heaven. Let me read it quickly. I want you to know that you cannot say, well, that's in the Old Testament. It doesn't apply to us. I will show you as time goes on. Queen of Heaven in the Old Testament, Queen of Heaven in the New Testament. Do you understand? And, and, the, and, and how it's one of Satan's messiahs. It's, one of, it's part of his, his, his kingdom to destroy. And it's in the Bible. I can't tell you why it's not spoken of because while we talk about the word and we talk about Jesus healing us we have to the word says do not be unaware of the schemes of Satan so if I read here from Ezekiel 14 verse 12 the word of the Lord came again to me saying son of man when the land sins against me by trespassing grievously then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it though these three men Noah, Daniel and Job were in it they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness says the Lord God if I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it will be it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beast though these three men were in it as I live saith the Lord God they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters they only shall be delivered but the land shall be desolate or if I bring a sword upon that land and say sword go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it though these three men were in it as I live saith the Lord God they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into the land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, and the noise and beast, and the pestilence, to cut off from it man and beast. And what God was saying here, without me going in any deeper to that passage, is while you must minister to your family, when time is up, if you are the only righteous one, then you will be the only one that God will save. 
because there comes a point in time where everybody is given an opportunity. And the sad thing today is that we cannot even say that they are being taught completely in all the churches. Why? I have no idea. What I will tell you, I started off saying this and I'm going to close saying this. When you have people who have gotten caught up it, and it's some of them, they don't get caught up in it. It's done to them by family members. Satanic ritual abuse, Satanism, and they want to come out of it. They are literally messaging for help from countries that there are plenty more churches than in this country. And we are seeing a trend. And the word is really right. The road is narrow and few will find it because right now, I, I would like to believe that as you all are discipled and, and you learn how to counsel and minister to people and don't only be wanting to cast out demons, understand that there's parts of people's soul that Jesus will heal and you take time and learn about how because you are following him, you are going to follow Jesus and you will minister to people where fragmented parts of their soul he is going to integrate back because he does it. It will spread. But right now, it's really a remnant. And it's really sad because there's so many walking around in bondage. Why? One, they're taught wrong. Two, they were born into wrong. Three, there aren't those around to put the wrong right. It's just a few. So some are perishing for lack of knowledge. But to whom much is given, much is required. You will hear more about the Queen of Heaven and she's usually hidden and you will find out how because at the end of the day anyhow you take it I want you to know you know a tree by its fruit so gone are the days that you're following somebody because they were in church for 10 years because you're not taking the word and looking at the fruit you're looking at your friendship you're not looking at the fruit if the fruit is not continuing to come forth something is wrong do I mean to spurn the person? no but they can't sharpen you you need to stop you need to do what those who are desperate as I started off saying when they want help they cut off their handlers these are people who I can't go into it again you all go back and listen to the message they will do anything and they'll send a message. We are desperate. We've cut off our handlers. We're doing everything you're telling us because me, I am no codependent savior. I don't jump in to every situation. I stand back. And when someone is really doing what they say and they get desperate, I'm okay. All right. You could email me now and we will communicate. Not WhatsApp. You're not coming through that portal with me. You could stay on the email. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because you know the person is, 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 is desperate. They are desperate because their situations are so hard to come out of. How it is with us. We have everything. But we tolerate respectable bondage. And then we encourage others to stay in respectable bondage. God is saying to the church today. He said it. We said it on Sunday. We're saying it again. The tables are turned. God is doing a new thing, no longer. First of all, is Jezebel going to be tolerated? There's a whole other message coming right after this one, sometime um, this evening, because Jezebel is usually connected with the Queen of Heaven. Okay? I want you to understand that all these things are weaved into the fabric of our daily life. Please don't feel, well, I didn't see no shrine looking, so, so it's not me. You need to know how to recognize the work of these principalities and the work of these entities in your everyday marriage, business, and life. You cannot be unaware of the schemes of Satan. And so, I just want to end with this in case you wonder, is it just the Catholic Church? No. I want you to understand just a couple things. Um, when that principality visited Babylon, she answered to the name Ishtar. When she appeared to the people of China, her name was Shingmu. When she visited 
Um, when she was in Ephesus, she was known as Diana. I could go on and on and on. All of them, all of it is in the Bible. I, I, could, I could give you the list, but we want to go into worship. Um, to the entire Islamic world, she's called Allah. Whether you accept it, you don't accept it, I'm letting you know. And to the Roman Catholic world, she's called the Virgin Mary. But there's hope. There's hope. So now you're, you're recognizing is the same principality in all the different areas and different religions. And guess what? We are a mishmash of, a mishmash of races in this country. So don't take your discipling light. Stop feeling that we reach. No, we have not. You've got to go and do this with others. But you have to have the oxygen mask on yourself. Your friend is not your discipler unless God has put that person in place. And they should be bearing 29 million more fruit than you. For iron to sharpen iron. I don't literally mean 29 million. But we tend to choose people who struggle the same way. Two years later, we're still stuck in the same way. So, Father, we are hearing about, and this is an introduction to the Queen of Heaven. Help us, Lord, as we take in this message. Father, help us to know that there are many schemes that you're exposing today. There's no holding back. All the stops are pulled out because... The spots and wrinkles can't be removed if they're hidden and nobody wants to call it out. So, Father, even if we seem weird, even if we seem, why are you mentioning that? You're judging other people. Yes, Lord, we are. Because you call us to identify those things that are not of you so that we can speak that word to the person who doesn't know. But first of all, if our generational line has been peppered with these pagan gods, that we have an opportunity, Father, to get the help to begin to renounce and reject. Say, saints, there's no big drama, fireworks, thunder, lightning. It's very simply the spoken word. I said it earlier. I begin to reject what was spoken over me with understanding, and I sever those ties, and I renounce it, and I don't go back to it. Who having wake when the family die and want to say the rosary and you're feeling bad to go? No, you say you cannot go. That's, you cannot go. Well, I don't know what to do. What to do? Make your choice. That's the stage I reach now. Don't come and ask me. You know what to do. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. You know what to do. If you travel, there are places you ought not to be going. Well, it's a tourist and I need to go. Yeah, you go ahead in Egypt with all the pyramids. You go right ahead. Every place you put your foot on, that's their holy place. You have come in agreement with them. And I'm letting you all know, for those of you that think I sit down and read these things in books, because of the privilege of ministering to those who are in some of the most complicated bondage, it's a privilege. Because the things I say here that people are like, oh gosh, here she goes again. Others are like, I did that renouncing. I cannot tell you what has happened when I started renouncing those things. We have not in the church of Jesus Christ in this country, I believe, definitely in America, come to the realization you could read the word to people day in and day out. But if you do not also through the power of the Holy Spirit, help them to know where Satan came in, what he's been doing, and deep areas in their soul that got taken over, mind, will, and emotions, got taken over. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If your mind is not renewed by the word and your mind is part of your soul, then transformation doesn't take place. So you can be worshiping God with part of your soul redeemed and the next part is not. I'll talk more about that. I've been teaching you all. It's not your brain we're talking about. It's your soul. Satan wants your soul. And some of us, he's grabbed a little piece. 
we want it back. In Jesus' name. So when I worship in up here, all my soul is worshiping the King of Kings, not part. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Let us worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as we worship him. God, begin to help us to be joyful with the privilege of who, who you are, who you are in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Praise his name.